Uh, I have to put a fair use warning on a mouse review because people are awful. Well, I suppose that leaves you wondering why I'm putting a fair use notice at the beginning of what's supposed to be a simple, ordinary mouse review. A while ago, I was contacted by a French-based company to review the Lexip 3DM Pro. Here's mine, a little worn from use, as one should be. Though technically, this is only the prototype. The finalized version of the mouse will look a little bit different. This mouse is a Kickstarter project. And the project is almost finished, so this review will be just in time. No more toying! And it won all of these awards for innovation. Uh-huh. Can I be honest with you? I mean, I'm gonna, whether you like it or not. So, just gonna be upfront with everybody? This mouse worried me from the moment I got information on it. I was very, very skeptical of this mouse. Like, actually skeptical. Like, I didn't get this mouse and assume that I was going to write a good review. And that's probably for the best because this won't be a positive review. Now, I make these videos as I go. I don't really plan them out all that much, so I don't know how much of this video is gonna end up talking about the mouse itself or the reviews of this mouse, which have left me frustrated. About a month ago, people started coming out with their reviews of this mouse, and almost all of the reviews have been two things. They have been both curiously ambiguous and positive. That's really kind of weird, but I'm sure we'll get into those as we progress. Because I'll be highlighting some of these reviews, because some of them piss me off. But before that, let's check out this Kickstarter video. Let's get into the review of the mouse by taking a look at the Kickstarter presentation that's on the front of their project page. Finally, a gaming mouse that puts full control in the palm of your hand. Oh. I wonder what he means by that. I already have a Logitech G600, and I really feel like I have an immense amount of control at my fingertips. And that's less than a third of your early bird price that you have for this mouse. And it's kind of weird, because last night I was looking at this and you only had 16 left. Now you have 63 left. Maybe you opened up more slots, I guess? I don't know. Most people probably won't get it for that price. They'll probably be able to get it for $134, so this is an expensive mouse. And I point out the price of this mouse because it is curiously devoid from practically all of the reviews that have been done on this mouse so far. So yeah, it's pricey, but if it's good enough to justify it, I don't see any problem with that. Maybe it is. Even your own web address for the Kickstarter says it's the most accurate and versatile gaming mouse ever. That's a pretty lofty goal to strive for, but I'm listening. Tell me more. Lexip is a mouse specifically designed for gamers of all levels. So whether you play in professional gaming tournaments or you're just a weekend gamer, Lexip is designed to be a versatile mouse for gamers everywhere. Oh, that doesn't inspire confidence. I would imagine that there would be a difference between the mouse that a professional, super enthusiastic gamer would use and the mouse that a filthy casual might use. Especially at this price point, but okay. Oh, awesome. The mouse is super smooth. And this is something a lot of companies can't get. It literally doesn't even feel like it's sliding on anything. The Lexip mouse easily allows you to perform complex tasks in multiple dimensions with increased precision. Usually you'd have to stop in order to switch through your items in your inventory. But when you're using the joystick, you can just simply just scroll through your items. So it does genuinely give you an advantage when you're playing a game like Minecraft. Well, most of that was just buzz and fluff. But can I, can I be real with you? A grown man sitting down in front of a computer screen telling me that this $130 mouse is going to give him a competitive advantage in Minecraft? Maybe that shouldn't have been your starter. And even then, I find some issues with this. How is this supposed to be an advantage, anyway? The small joystick on the side of this mouse, which is supposed to be one of its very few selling points, is clearly being used as a glorified scroll wheel meaning that it doesn't actually give you any extra or new functionality. It just adds something that you already have at your fingertips, 
to the side of the mouse. I'm gonna wager that most of the people watching this have played Minecraft or are familiar with how Minecraft works. You use the scroll wheel to cycle through the items in the bar down below. He says you don't have to stop to cycle through these items, but you've never had to stop while you cycle through these items. Why would he say that? It's not like you have to actually stop, cycle through your items on a default mouse, and instead you can move and cycle through your items on this Lexip mouse, this $130 mouse. This actually, for me, would be a loss in functionality. I will constantly be referencing the mouse that I use and that I love. The Logitech G600. It's listed technically as an MMO mouse, but I use it primarily for first-person shooters that I play. Because telling people to go out and buy a mouse that costs $122, it had better offer me something that's pretty substantial. Because the G600 is less than a third of the price of this mouse here you're trying to sell me. Now, I myself have played a great deal of Minecraft. Memes aside, I really enjoy the game. You see, the buttons on the side give me extra functionality because they allow me to use my thumb, which otherwise is going unused, to select any item at will from the menu bar at the bottom of the screen in Minecraft without having to cycle or scroll through them. This is a higher level of functionality and customization that I have with my mouse than yours. Lexip, I fail to see how your mouse gives you a competitive advantage in Minecraft. Maybe the benefit is supposed to be that you can cycle through your items in your inventory without your finger leaving the left mouse click button, but you would just scroll with your middle finger. I mean, if that was really important to you, this doesn't add any advantage. Lexip provides six degrees of freedom via two joysticks and one laser glide sensor. It works by tilting forward, backward, and side to side. The mouse moves with your hand and it goes with it. That's a very big plus. Is it? Even conceptually, this seems like something that would be counterproductive, annoying, unhelpful in most of the games you'd ever play. Only a small list of games could you potentially even get the slightest advantage of having this Axis feature. But we'll explore that a little bit more later in this review. Essentially, the top of the mouse, the shell, sits on what is practically a thumbstick, a joystick. You can tilt it forward, back, left, right. Sometimes, even when you mean to. This mouse would actually give a competitive advantage in gameplay. Oh, but don't tell us how. People love a good mystery. It has a joystick on the side, so if I'm playing and I want to zoom in to shoot someone, it automatically goes into the zoom mode. I don't have to, like, double-click on the mouse. What? That's awesome. I'm, I'm kind of shot. Are, are, are they going to give you one? I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> so soon after, we have a guy sitting down and playing Destiny 2 on PC, which... I mean, I didn't know people still did that, but fair enough. He's sitting down and he's talking to Bulletberry on the other side of the mic, and he's explaining to him that instead of ADSing with the right click, like practically every single shooter game has built into it as the default that you're used to, instead he can use the awkwardly positioned joystick on the left-hand side of the mouse to ADS instead. Now, you might be wondering why on earth would this be something that you would actually want to do? The hell if I know! What's the point of fighting back the muscle memory that you've learned and experienced from practically every shooter developed since the dawn of time? What advantage could this possibly give you over the default standard, which is probably the default standard for a reason? I have no idea! Lexip's shape is designed in a way that buttons are very accessible while still providing a solid feeling. Good to know they decided to make the buttons on the mouse accessible. That was a that was a good decision. I support this decision. I think that was a good call to make. Bravo. The sides are covered in the finest rubber. Ah yes, only the finest of rubber. I don't know much about using rubber, so I'll take your word for it. Enabling a strong grip when needed. It's comfortable, it's smooth. I wasn't ready for it. I actually found the mouse to be rather uncomfortable to use. Here's a top-down view of the mouse. You can clearly make out the lighter gray mouse click buttons on the top where they would normally be. The area in red here, this is part of the mouse frame itself. You can't click these parts of the mouse. The actual areas to do the mouse clicking is quite small. When my human put his hand on top of the mouse, he would have to curl his fingers uncomfortably over the top so that he could actually reach the mouse click buttons. Quite frankly, we both decided that this was a terrible design decision on the part of the company. The most important buttons on that mouse are the mouse click buttons, and you are sacrificing one's comfort to reach them in order to have this tilting frame. The plastic highlighted in red, it's so that you can put your fingers there to support the mouse when you tilt the mouse forward. 
but it is at the immense expense of your ability to rest your fingers comfortably on the green area where you actually click the buttons. The first game I loaded up to try with the new mouse was Devil Daggers. It's simple, fast, and I'm constantly moving the mouse around in tandem with my keyboard. It should be a great way for me to get a feel for this mouse and see how it just might hold up. A majority of the time spent in game will have your finger pressing down on the fire button as you fling daggers at the devils. That's the name. It became quickly apparent that this was not going to be comfortable. My finger had to curl up high so that I could reach the mouse click button and I wouldn't have my fingers resting on the frame. This was just to have me get used to the smoothness of the aiming that the mouse provided to me, which I will give it immense props for because it is due them. As seen earlier in the footage I showed, this mouse has six ceramic plates on the bottom. This allows it to glide with an, well, an astonishing level of smoothness over my gamepad. In fact, I can't think of another mouse that was as smooth to control as the Lexip 3DM Pro. And after my time just practicing with aiming this mouse, I have full confidence that in that term alone, your accuracy won't be negatively affected by using this mouse. You can learn it. Neither myself nor my resident human were able to do this though, especially because of how it made his hand so uncomfortable with the way that his fingers had to curl in order to reach the clickable zones. The Lexip Gaming Mouse also provides a separate model specifically designed for left-handed gamers. A legitimately useful and pro-consumer design decision. I fully support this. What truly sets the Lexip mouse apart from its competitors is its conveniently positioned joystick on the side of the mouse. I disagree. I think that the placement of this joystick on the side of the mouse is anything but convenient. First off, it's practically a redundant feature. Outside of a very few examples that can be made, it does nothing but get in the way. It didn't feel like there was a natural or comfortable or ergonomic spot for a thumb to be. It felt like it was getting in the way of what otherwise could have been much more useful buttons instead. Consider how a pair of human thumbs might nestle up comfortably against the 12 buttons along the side of the Logitech G600. Even if it was equal in its comfortability, it would be unequal in the fact that this Logitech mouse offers far more functionality. And again, at less than a third of the price. You're trying to sell me a very expensive mouse. Along with its internal mechanical two-axis joystick, which allows users to operate the mouse to tilt or to use as a joystick, offering two options in one. This mini joystick features mechanical feedback forces that only regular sized joysticks used to offer, making this the first of its kind. Oh, and there's certainly not been any shortage of that description. It's so unique, I've never seen anything like it before. Maybe that would explain how pricey it is. Either way, just because it's unique and new and you've never seen it before doesn't mean that it should be confused with quality or usefulness. And many, many of the reviews are using its uniqueness as a selling point of the mouse. Even though this peripheral's unique nature has nothing to do with its functionality or its quality. It is not good because it's unique. It is not functional because it's unique. If it doesn't, and especially at the price point it's at, offer me something of real value or usefulness or practicality, I don't care if it's unique or not. Once you get past the I've never seen anything like it phase, you don't really see anything of actual value here. Is it cool? Is it a nifty idea? Yeah, sure, I guess, maybe, depends on who you ask. But I can't tell people they should pony up $130 for a nifty idea. As I read descriptions and frequently ask questions, and as I watch this video as it rolls on by, I ask myself, but where would this actually be useful? And luckily, they do show something next that actually would display where it could come in handy to some degree. The joystick allows me to go through the entire map, which is actually really cool. I mean, it's great. It's going to make a massive difference in big games. You see, there we go. All right, finally, something that might actually be a little useful. In games where there's a top-down view and you have to scroll around the map, instead of panning using the edges of cameras or clicking on the minimap, you could use the thumbstick to do that instead while your cursor was busy pointing on people and things and items and telling them what you want them to do. Maybe if you were a hardcore MOBA aficionado, this mouse could come in handy. Oh wow, well, yeah, you can use the, uh, the joystick really works well right here. It was at this point of the video where I decided that I might have to do the unthinkable, the unspeakable, in order to make this review the most honest and practical that I possibly could for the consumer, I might have to do something that I never thought I would ever do again in my life. 
I would have to install Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And the Lexip 3DM mouse did not offer me any advantage whatsoever. I wonder what was going through his head when he said this. I would legitimately want to know. Because in my usage of this mouse with Counter-Strike, it offers no advantage whatsoever. It's the cursor that selects items on the weapon wheel that has nothing to do with the individual functionality of the Lexip mouse. If he's referring to in-game bindings, then that's a functionality that can be obtained for much, much, much cheaper from a wide, wide variety of different mice that are built for gaming. Please support our campaign so that you too can take advantage of the innovative features our gaming mouse will offer you. Elevate your gameplay with Lexit. Needless to say, this online presentation for their Kickstarter left a lot of questions in my mind, many of which were confirmed later when they sent me one. This is an expensive product, and I can only recommend expensive products if they give appropriate returns to functionality or to practicality. Unique, interesting, these are nice, but I could never ask somebody or recommend that somebody shell out 120, 130 plus dollars so they can have an item that's just interesting. I admire the desire for innovation, but I can't help but feel this mouse doesn't serve any purpose if you have two functional arms. And when I say this, it might sound like it's coming across as a joke, but I mean it in complete sincerity. I can only recommend that you buy this mouse if you have one arm, because it would come in handy. <laughs> come in handy. Uh. <clears throat> But this mouse actually would be of immense benefit to someone who is disabled in some way. If you lost the use of an arm, and you were frustrated over the lack of peripherals that would allow you to play a wider variety of games, well, this might be the thing for you. This might be the solution to the problem that you have. And even with that recommendation, I have some reservations. Let me explain. Let me put some gameplay footage up so you have something to look at. Here's Vermintide 2. Fantastic game. Go buy it. Even if you only have the use of one hand or one arm, a more dedicated gaming mouse might actually serve you more functionality and more usefully in a wide variety of games, ones that don't require movement and aiming to be different functions. Games like Divinity Original Sin 2 or StarCraft or RTSs like that, even MOBAs, they would be served better by a mouse like the Logitech G600 that I use. If you only have one arm, that means that you don't have the ability to use either the mouse or the keyboard at the same time. A large set of buttons along the side of the mouse would give you a set of functions that you could program at whim to simulate buttons on the keyboard that you could use with the thumb that otherwise wouldn't be doing anything on a default mouse. So the 12 buttons along the side of the Logitech G600 could be tied to functionalities like uh, W, A, S, D, E, F, spacebar, caps lock, any button that you want. And by pressing the third mouse click button on top, you could shift between a completely new set of keys on the side, effectively giving you the option to have 24 keys using only your mouse. That's a functionality that would, with enough practice, put you on par with somebody who had two hands in most scenarios. And that's a big deal. Is there anything clever about cramming 12 buttons onto the side of a mouse, just putting a bunch of buttons on the side of a mouse for you to press? No, there's nothing clever about it. But is it functional? It is immensely functional. In fact, it's probably the most functional thing that I can think of. Is it graceful? Is it unique? No, but it is practical. It is incredibly practical. It is insanely useful. On the Kickstarter page, there is a question in the Frequently Asked Questions tab. They say, we 100% agree that joysticks are more logical than the current button frenzy. I vehemently disagree. Maybe there is a reason that it is the current thing, that the button frenzy, as they call it, maybe there's a reason that's what's in, that's what's cool with the kids right now, because we have had so much time to find out what works and what doesn't work, and just slapping a bunch of buttons on the side of the mouse gives people as many functions as there are buttons. I am losing functionality when I am using the 3DM Pro over the Logitech G600 or my similar to it in design, and that's not something that makes my experience better. 
The idea of computer peripherals, the idea of a mouse and keyboard is to make that thing in your head happen on the screen in front of you. The idea is you want to, with as little issue as possible, translate what you want to happen into reality. You want to use the keyboard to make the words in your head appear on screen. You use the mouse to make a cursor select the things that you want to interact with. You want to have peripherals that allow the user to enhance their experience by allowing them to more quickly and more efficiently make the things in their head appear on the screen. A gamer mouse is a gamer mouse because it ideally, in function, allows for there to be more methods to have the player execute actions that they want to occur in their head onto the screen. The more efficient doing these actions is, the better their gaming will be, and the easier it will be on them. Could I play Vermintide 2 with a standard typical mouse? Absolutely. I could be very, very good at the game with a standard typical default mouse, but the mouse I have allows me to eliminate any obstacles that might occur from me making the things in my head appear on screen. It allows me to easily select weapons. It allows me to easily team chat even when I'm in the middle of a busy fight and I'm focusing on the game. And every different mouse, and obviously a lot of this will be subjective, but the idea is that every individual mouse has a different design that will conform to a number of gamers who find that particular design to be the most effective. The makers of the Lexic mouse say that they agree having a joystick on the side of the mouse makes far more sense than having buttons. In my experience, it makes far, far more sense to have buttons. And the Minecraft example that they used earlier, where this game makes you more competitive at playing Minecraft, brilliant selling feature that is, why would I want to scroll through a bar of items when I could just press the button corresponding to the slot? If one is always my axe, and two is always my sword, and five is always my torch, why would I want to scroll through four different things if I want to go from my axe to my light source? It is far faster and far more practical for me to just press the button on the side of the mouse corresponding to the slot that I want to access. Practically all of the functionality that they described in their Kickstarter program and that I've seen in a lot of these reviews, which we'll get to in a moment because a lot of them piss me off. Here, let's put it this way. I want to get my thoughts on the actual mouse review done because I want to move on to something else soon. In order to test this mouse for first-person shooters, which is clearly something that they want it to be used for, after all, it's the... What is it? The most accurate and versatile gaming mouse ever, according to their web address on their Kickstarter, and they show it very prominently in their Kickstarter video. I decided to take the tilt of the mouse and assign it to different functions that would impede me if I was playing a game. Perhaps I would randomly pull out a piece of equipment, and I bound these to the forward, backward, left, and right motions on the mouse to see if, during gameplay, I would ever accidentally activate these motions and tilt the mouse. And I don't think anybody who's watching this video will be surprised when I tell you that I was constantly, accidentally triggering these functions. This is something that you've never had to think of with any other mouse that you've ever tried because no other mouse is basically a joystick sitting on a flat platform on an axis designed for tilting. And you don't want to be tilting this in almost every game or application that you use this mouse in. It is only in very, very rare circumstances where you would put any of these tilting functions to use. And that's not what the promotional material might lead you to believe. One of the first examples I was ever sent about using this mouse in action was in Overwatch. Popular tank character D.Va has a thrust ability that allows her to zoom forward up into the air or around or into enemies, which they want you to tilt the mouse forward to activate. This makes absolutely no sense. Your finger is already resting on the left shift button that would otherwise complete this action anyway. It is a redundant function. Why ever would you want to move the entire mouse and take your fingers off the fire buttons in order to execute this thrust maneuver, especially because D.Va is designed to be able to shoot with the left mouse button while she is thrusting? How come the marketing that they are presenting for this mouse makes the mouse look even worse and nobody has said anything about this? How come all of these reviewers talk often ambiguously of how wonderful and cool and unique this mouse is and none of them seem to notice, by the way, they're advertising that this mouse does things worse than the default setup that any computer would allow you to do. 
And that's not even getting into the awkwardness and the uncomfortable design that this mouse uses. This mouse ultimately doesn't give you better ways of doing what you already do. It gives you alternative, worse ways to do it. And that's unacceptable for a mouse that's over $120. And ironically, D.Va uses joysticks. But let's talk about the joystick functionality. The idea is that the Lexip 3DM Pro is an all-in-one joystick and mouse. However, it does both of these things rather poorly. It doesn't give you an advantage in terms of being a gaming mouse. And as far as joysticks go, how in any way could I recommend that people buy a poor joystick and a poor mouse when they can have a really good mouse and a dedicated joystick for the same price? Multiple people recommended me to this model in particular by Thrustmaster, the T.1600M FCS HOTAS controller. It's rated extremely highly and is considered a middle tier quality joystick and thruster and it is $100, even less if you buy one used. There are tons of highly rated mouses that are far less in price than the Lexip 3DM Pro mouse, and these are dedicated joysticks. You could get a mouse specifically designed for gaming, and joysticks specifically designed for being joysticks, and still have spent less money than you would have on this mouse. And after using the tilting function in the demo that they've provided, and testing its sensitivity in the dead zone, and being able to use the modeling-like demo that they provided in the software that they gave, the last thing that I wanted to do with this mouse was use it in a flight simulator. The reason I'm hammering this mouse so hard in the joystick aspect is because that's basically what you're paying for. At least that's the big prominent selling point that this mouse has to offer. And so many people, so many reviewers say, hey, this would be great for flight simulators. This is supposed to be used for flight simulators. And even the demonstrations that I've seen given have been less than impressive. But let's stop and let's consider that point. What if this mouse was designed for flight simulators? This mouse should be recommended to people who love flight simulator games. Which makes me want to know, if people are really enthusiastic about flight simulators and you're telling them to buy a mouse for $120, $130, then why would I not recommend that they buy a dedicated flight simulator joystick? And then buy a dedicated gaming mouse with all the functionality that includes. Not to mention if this mouse is designed for people who love flight simulators, I would imagine that a lot of them probably already have joysticks anyway. And even if they didn't, then my previous point stands. If this mouse was $50, $60, then I could maybe see what this would offer. An all-in-one solution for gamers on a budget who want the benefits of both rolled into one workable option. Not stellar, not necessarily advantageous, but workable but I simply can't do that. The thumbstick that gets so much attention on the side of this mouse doesn't make much sense in practicality either when used as a alternative, a redundant alternative to a scroll wheel, especially because since it's a joystick, it is infinitely scrolling. As long as you hold it down in a direction, it will keep scrolling. The speed at which it scrolls is determined by a sensitivity function. Now you can make the sensitivity very, very high, and if that's the case, then in games like Vermintide 2, for instance, where there's no um, limit on on how fast you can swap weapons, it becomes useless because there's no way to stop it from only activating once or activating five, six, seven times. You have to slow down the sensitivity in order to ensure that you only swap your weapon once and you don't go all the way around the horn. Which means that if the function of this was to save time, then you have to negate that aspect because you have to slow down the sensitivity of it. Most scroll wheels on the top of mice have little ridges where you can feel that you've moved it one click, two click, three, etc. That prevents you from overshooting, and you know that I've moved this one spot, I've moved this two spots, but you don't get that on the joystick. It makes it even less useful as a redundant feature. Ugh. Simply put, the advantages that this mouse gives are so small, if it's not outright being worse than the option you probably have in your hands right now as a gaming mouse, that I cannot at all in good conscience recommend that you go out and buy one for these purposes. I think that they should go back to the drawing board and really take a look at what this mouse is trying to be, and I particularly don't think this is going to take off on the market because it doesn't really solve anything that a lot of people are probably asking for. And I think that once the novelty of it wears off, nobody is going to be using this for their daily mouse. 
unless it's the one that they got for their review, which seems to be something that I hear a lot of. That doesn't surprise me, after all, this thing is hella expensive. And a lot of people, if they get one for free to review, yeah, I've got it, might as well use it. That being said, after going through all the reviews of this mouse, I legitimately believe that this will be the only non-recommendation on YouTube. This video, this review, right here. And when I've been showing people this mouse in Discord to get their impressions and what they thought of the idea, a lot of these thoughts were very cautious. They were negative off the bat. They wondered what's the point of this or if this would be, this would be counterproductive towards gaming. The reception was very lukewarm just to the idea, and yet in reviews the idea is being praised. It's so unique, it's so interesting, and that got recommendations alone. Let's take a look here at just what I'm talking about, because a lot of these reviews have been borderline... Pri no, I'm not even going to say borderline. Some of these reviews have been outright dishonest in the way that they recommend this mouse to people. And I have no doubt in my mind that a lot of people recommended this mouse because they got it from a company to review for free. Some of which, apparently, some people were paid. I didn't get paid. They just sent me the mouse for free and wanted me to do a video on it, and I'm finally getting around to doing that. But some of these reviews, they clearly had decided that it would be a positive review before they even tried it out. In fact, one of the reviewers we're going to look at absolutely recommends this mouse for professional gamers before she even uses it. It's very clear that there are reviewers out there who got this mouse and thought it was special, they thought it was neat, and they decided that this would be a positive review no matter how it really was, that they would let whatever little good outweigh the bad. They wouldn't ask questions about the price or the availability, they wouldn't compare it to the mice that they have. They would recommend this mouse to people regardless of its quality or its usefulness. And I am going to call you out. I think that of all the reviews for this mouse that I've watched, I really only like three of them. Jay's Two Cents did a good one, WAF did a good one, and Zoran the Bear did a good one. And I mean, not necessarily good, but they were decent, which by comparison makes them seem good. And one thing that I noticed about a great deal amount of these channels is how big they were in terms of sub count and how tiny they were in amount of actual views. It's just something strange that I've noticed. It's no indication of whether these were good or bad reviews. 48,000 subs and 518 views. 328,000 subs and 1.8 thousand views. 124,000 subs and 2.1 thousand views. 100,000 subs and 303 views, etc, etc. It just struck me as odd how many of these channels I was running across. But it doesn't matter how big or small you are, a good review is a good review, a bad review is a bad review. And when I say bad, I mean outright dishonest, and I mean people who have made up their minds before they've even tested it. And if you're going to take money from a company, if you're going to make a promotional video, and you're going to shill for a mouse, and you're going to do it in a dishonest way, I am going to call you out. Or there's just straight up laziness. In this review of the mouse, and I use that term in the lightest sense possible, Bearded Murloc spends 18 seconds out of his meager 1 minute and 33 second review to actually talk to the viewer about his experiences with the mouse in the most ambiguous, unhelpful way possible. I have been using this mouse for a while now, and I must say it enhanced my gaming experience for sure, and definitely helped me improve my video editing experience since I can zoom in and out of the timeline really easy with a thumb joystick and move frames forward and backwards with a tilting of the cell. And that's it. That's all there is. There's no more. That was the review. In its entirety, 18 seconds. I must say it enhanced my gaming experience. How? In what way did it enhance your gaming experience? And it made your video editing experience better because you had a redundant feature on the side of the mouse that you could use by default on your old mouse and you could select individual frames by using a tilting feature which is far from the exact kind of control you would want from that kind of function. Anybody who has done any level of video editing in their life would know that what you're saying makes no sense at all, but at least you were here to tell us in your 18 seconds that it enhanced your gaming experience. This is a $120, $130 mouse, and you told us that. That was your review. It enhanced your gaming experience.
all you could be bothered to tell the consumer who came to you for a review was that it enhanced your gaming experience. Man, I really hope Lexip feel like they got their money's worth out of you. One common theme from videos is that reviewers never stop and ask themselves, so I've discovered that this mouse offers me a certain functionality. Why should I question whether it's useful or not? Should I ever ask myself what actual purpose it would solve, or why I would ever want to try and take advantage of this? In the review by Hazelnutty Games, she discovers that she can jump with pressing the joystick forwards and never once questions, why would I ever want to use this, and instead uses it as a cool selling feature. I don't know if this is automatic, but it actually has jump bound to flicking the joystick forward, and I love that. I love that. I never remember to double jump on my Genji. But why would you ever want to do that? Is it interesting? Maybe for the first few times you actually do it, but you understand that on your left hand, your thumb is always perpetually resting on the spacebar, right? Why are these things just accepted and explained without the reviewer ever asking what purpose they serve, especially at this premium price point? It's just so strange because the review ends with her saying this. I have what is basically a Shadow Priest Zenny skin on, and I can jump with my mouse. You know what I should do with this mouse in Overwatch is bind some sprays and emos to the joystick. That's clearly the most efficient use of it, right? That's worth. That's worth. So yeah, some summary thoughts on the mouse as I try not to die. I think that the movement of the mouse is very good. The joystick was surprisingly easy to get used to and quite useful. The joystick was quite useful because it is a less intuitive, redundant feature, and I can bind sprays and emotes to it. Very, very useful. All for the low, low price of $130. Yeah, totally worth it. I totally recommend the mouse based on that. You bet, keep, keep selling that mouse, guys. Keep selling that mouse. Other bits of other reviews were just kind of curious to me, like I was wondering what they were talking about. Another thing this mouse brings to the table is a premium gaming laser sensor. There was no skimping whatsoever in any part that she used to build this mouse. And the sensor is very, very accurate. Like I said before, up to 8200 DPI adjustment. This is actually one of the most overused, overhyped words in the gaming peripheral industry. Then gamers created hype around it thinking it was good and this creates a positive feedback loop around this feature that doesn't actually improve the product necessarily and in some cases even makes it less accurate. Uh, thanks Linus. I'll wrap it up here at what I believe is the most egregious example of bad reviewing. And it's not just born of inexperience. It's born of being outright dishonest. It's born of the idea that it must be, the product must be recommended. It must be sold. It must be shilled at all costs. It must be shown to be something that people should buy. Your integrity doesn't matter. Your honesty doesn't matter. How you really feel, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you push the product. That company came to you with money, or a promotional figure, or a free item, and as a result, you are obligated to make sure that as many people think positively of it as possible, regardless of how good it really is, or even if you've used it. So once you open it up and you are greeted with this, you actually see the mouse, and my first impressions are it looks really sleek and clean and modern. That modern... okay. It just looks sleek and clean, okay? Yeah, guys, before I take it out of the box, it looks clean. Um, it definitely, I can see the joystick right here, so that's really good. Yeah, guys, it's a really good thing there's a joystick there. No, I don't have to use it or test it to make sure that it's good or not that there's a joystick there where my thumb should be. This is definitely good, without a doubt. No, I don't have to try it to find out for myself. I think, I think it's a pretty good mouse, especially the joystick on the side, as you can see. It's, it's kind of, it's different. I've never, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know how to explain the joystick. I think it's a cool idea. It's very, I've never seen this before, so it's definitely, um, definitely a cool new idea, but, ooh, I've never seen it before, so I really have no words, but overall, I think it's really nice from first impressions. And I'm very excited for this mouse. I cannot wait to try it out while I'm gaming. And yeah, I think that this is going to be a very successful mouse when uh, doing professional gaming and other things like that. So I definitely recommend this for people who um, 
are definitely gamers and who take gaming seriously and want a nice this is basically for like hardcore professional gamers I don't think I'm worthy to that title just yet, but I'm I'm very excited to try it out. Um, so, before she has even tried it out for gaming, this reviewer has decided that it is going to be something she recommends for professional gamers. The joystick is a cool new idea. I haven't tried it. I haven't used this mouse for, you know, playing video games, but if you professionally play video games, I recommend this mouse for you. I know this because this is a promotional video, and I don't want to accept an item and give an honest review on it. I would much rather tell you that you need to get it. I don't even need to use it to tell you that I recommend it to you. Also, it's clean before you take it out of the package. Can you, dear viewer, understand now? Can you fathom? Can you see for yourself? That from which my frustration grows. Imagine reviewing an item and declaring that professionals in its respective field should be using it and it has your recommendation before you yourself have even touched it for its intended purpose. So yeah, let me try out the joystick and see exactly what it does. Oh, so okay, so this is definitely a faster way to get what I need. How is this a faster way to select your weapons in Grand Theft Auto 5? which I reinstalled for this review to double check, to make sure. So I could be certain, because this is a review, that the function that she's describing here isn't just the mouse wheel. I installed Grand Theft Auto 5 and remembered almost instantly why I had put three days worth of time into this fun game, and proceeded to dick around, selecting that weapon, this weapon, just to see, just to remind myself what an ordeal it must have been to select weapons from a weapon wheel. By pressing tab, the weapon wheel appears and time around you slows down. By hovering over an item without leaving the weapon wheel, you can then use the scroll wheel to select different items of the same type. Alternatively, you can simply scroll the scroll wheel and in doing so, cycle between the weapons that you have available to you. It is an easy, simple, and concise way to cycle between weapons. You gain no advantage from having an extra redundant scroll wheel on the side of your mouse. All right, so holding tab slows down the world. I can select weapons using the mouse wheel. Really simple, really basic, really quick. My grenade launcher, my assault rifle, my other assault rifle, my SMGs. You just scroll whenever you're highlighting something and you swap between the different weapons. So let's go light things on fire. I have no idea why I'm doing this. I always had a problem with uh, getting like the guns and stuff that I need, so that's really nice for this to work. It's definitely an easier way, and it goes that way, so that, that's really nice. Literally a redundant feature. Crap! Well, okay, well, I'm just gonna quickly get done with this review. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't don't let the review of the $130 mouse get in the way of your game time. Don't do not do that. That would be silly. Um, I'm definitely trying the 3D thing out, but I'm not exactly sure how this comes into play that much um i'm very confused i thought maybe i could uh like use it to actually turn and pivot and things like that but i guess um i was wrong with that maybe it's something else that works differently i'm not sure um but yeah overall this mouse is actually uh really good oh yeah absolutely i mean it's a great mouse i i can't elaborate or explain on where the primary selling point of the entire mouse would come into play. I don't see any use for it personally, but it's a it's a great mouse. You guys should buy one. I recommend it for professional gamers, in fact. I definitely recommend it if you're like a professional hardcore gamer and you're also used to um, consoles and things like that because... What? I'm not used to consoles. I'm used to just gaming on my PC, so the joystick will definitely be something... Um, I'll have to get used to, but I think it would be, um... No, 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 go go back. Why why would you, why would this be a thing that you recommend to people who play on console? I would, I would love to hear the thought process behind that statement. It's actually very beneficial in some ways. It definitely is. Could, could you please elaborate on what ways those ways might be? Um, so yeah, this mouse is actually really good. I definitely recommend it. Um, I'm definitely going to be trying to get used to this. I'm not used to such a good mouse like this. I c could you explain to us why it is a good mouse in your opinion? So it's going to be a little bit harder for me to, uh, like, uh, get used to, but I think that this is going to be a mouse that I'm definitely going to very love.
could we be made privy to the information from which you made that assessment? Because it, it sounds like, and it seems like, you, you don't really know, and you're extremely unsure about the mouse, and you don't even really like it all that much. I mean, that's just kind of the impression that I get from the words coming out of your mouth. One day, I hope that I can be so good at reviewing products that I can recommend them to professionals in their field without me even having to use them. Just by looking at it, just by holding it in her hand, without even using it, she knows that this is going to be advantageous for professionals, and it's really going to take off. I'm done. I'm done. I'm talking about the YouTube videos about the mouse that I'm doing a review for, and it just struck me as odd because I was watching these reviews, and so many of them were just terrible. They were terrible reviews, and yet they were all recommendations of a mouse that they reviewed poorly, awfully. Some of them were decent. Some of them absolutely were decent, but they were few and far between. The norm was that the mouse was reviewed really poorly. I've been rambling on for long enough, and I feel like it's time to wrap things up. This is ultimately a mouse review, even though it turned out to be a little bit more than that. Brevity is not one of my primary attributes, I'm told. So I did some typing and some thinking in order to concisely and clearly round up what my thoughts are on the Lexip 3D Pro. By their words, the most accurate and versatile gaming mouse ever. The... the ultimate gaming experience. Available through Kickstarter in the next few days for the low low price of $122, assuming you get the early bird price, and if not, it will be about $134 for the discount kickstart price. After that, I'm not certain how much the mouse will be, though I doubt it will get cheaper when it first releases. My final thoughts. The joystick is useless and redundant in most of the games that you'll play, getting in the way of potentially more useful buttons. The shape of the mouse is uncomfortable and the positioning of the frame around the mouse click button makes your fingers sore because they have to curl so fingertips meet the end of the buttons there. The grip on the mouse otherwise is fine and doesn't slip off the materials they used. The middle mouse button is resistant to being pressed for some reason and the Lexit button beneath the mouse wheel is not easy to press either based on its odd positioning. In fact, my G600 mouse that I use has two buttons on the spot beneath the mouse wheel and they go unused as well because I'm consistent. The axis upon which the mouse sits often activates functions assigned to it when you don't mean to press them, giving you absolutely no advantage in any scenario apart from perhaps, perhaps, maybe, perhaps, maybe, games where you are controlling an object in three-dimensional space. Though if you are into games like flight simulators and similar games, I would highly recommend that at this price level you simply go and purchase for yourself a good peripheral like a joystick that's designed exactly and expressly for that purpose. The software included with the mouse is functional and basic, offering a good level of customization that you would expect from a mouse of this kind. The plates on the bottom of the mouse offer a legitimately impressive smoothness to aiming, and I have little doubt that you can learn to be very accurate with this mouse. But ultimately, it is far too expensive and lacking in usefulness or functionality or daily practicality for me to recommend when there are cheaper and better options available both in terms of gaming mice and joysticks. And while the idea is interesting, it is not practical enough to justify its price tag to the vast majority of potential buyers. Those are my thoughts on the Lexip 3DM Pro Professional Gaming Mouse, the ultimate gaming experience, the most accurate and versatile gaming mouse ever. Check out the Kickstarter down below if you feel like you would be interested in supporting this mouse. Perhaps it would be useful for you or somebody that you know. I don't doubt it for a second that people out there will find some use for this mouse. So go check out the Kickstarter, if you feel ever so inclined. I will be rolling out Patreon rewards within the next few days, once I have them finalized and set up, and I can ensure that the launch of the server, at least publicly, will go with as smooth a launch as I can possibly get it. But, if you want to support me, then I do have a Patreon that will be linked in the description. My Patreon has been growing quite a bit the last month or so, and for that I'm extremely grateful. And I really, really appreciate you guys helping me out to do this full-time now, getting away from the daily grind, and it has been immensely beneficial to me. And for that, I'm extremely gracious. Thank you, thank you. 
Before I go, though, let me offer you this word of advice from me to you. If you ever find yourself with a YouTube channel or other platform and you're approached by a company and given for free the option to potentially promote a product or review it before it hits public shelves, understand that you being honest with your audience about how you personally feel about it is far more important than what that company thinks of you. For some reason, I was the only YouTuber who apparently could not recommend this and overall had negative thoughts to say about it. So be it! I was honest with how I felt, and for that, I will not apologize.